Hi, this is E. David Crawford, Editor-in-Chief of Grand Rounds in Urology. There has been a lot of discussion regarding the effects of androgens and outcomes with COVID-19. Joining me to discuss a clinical trial entitled Hormonal Intervention for the Treatment of Veterans with COVID-19 Requiring Hospitalization, the HITS trial is Dr. Matt Reddick. Matt is Chief of Hematology and Oncology at the VA Medical Center in Greater Los Angeles and as a professor of medicine and urology at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. Matt, I appreciate you sharing with us this uh, prospective trial and uh, look forward to uh, seeing the results of it. Hi, my name is uh, Matthew Reddig. I'm a GU medical oncologist. Uh, I work at uh, UCLA and the affiliated uh, VA. And um, today I'll be talking about an interesting conversion convergence between prostate cancer research and COVID-19. So uh, the title of uh, the talk is Hormonal Intervention for the Treatment of Veterans with COVID-19 Requiring Hospitalization, or HITCH. So in, in general, the uh, incidence of COVID-19 is similar in males and females, although some studies have observed modest differences in contrast there are marked differences in the severity of COVID-19 that have been consistently observed during the global pandemic. This slide demonstrates that although COVID-19 incidence is similar between the genders, the severity of the illness as indicated by hospitalization rate, ICU admissions, death, and overall case fatality rate are approximately twofold higher in men irrespective of geography. So explanations for the gender difference, um, differences in outcome include behavioral differences such as uh, smoking history, presence of comorbidities such as lung and heart disease, as well as biological differences such as differences in sex hormones whereby androgens may increase risk and estrogens may actually be protective. This slide demonstrates uh, two studies that have reported on the incidence of COVID-19 <clears throat> in men on androgen deprivation therapy, ADT, compared to men not on ADT. An Italian study demonstrated an approximately four-fold increase in COVID-19 incidence in men not on ADT as compared to those men on ADT. Amongst prostate cancer patients, men on ADT had a five-fold reduction in incidence of COVID-19. The authors did not perform logistic regression analysis to correct for differences in demography, medication usage, or comorbidities, nor did they perform propensity weighting to <clears throat> account for the likelihood to be tested for COVID-19 in the first place. There were too few patients on ADT to make any firm conclusions about the severity of illness. A more recent study by Klein et al. did not demonstrate a difference in COVID-19 incidence based on ADT. These authors did perform multivariate analyses to account for differences in the patients on ADT versus those not on ADT, but propensity weighting for the likelihood for being tested for COVID-19 was not performed. There were too few COVID-19 patients to address severity and outcomes related to ADT. So the VA is the largest integrated healthcare system in the United States. Approximately 9 million veterans are enrolled in the VA. 500,000 are alive with prostate cancer of which approximately 17,000 are alive with metastatic disease. The VA has the oldest electronic medical record system in the US. Medical records for all veterans are stored in a central data warehouse and transferred to a research platform known as the VA Informatics and Computing Infrastructure, or VINCI. We undertook an analysis of COVID-19 incidents amongst veterans on ADT versus various populations not on ADT. These <clears throat> analyses were conducted uh, by colleagues at, um, uh, at, at VINCI. <clears throat> Importantly, we performed logistic regression analysis to account for demographic differences, such as weight, 
age, medications, marital status, et cetera. In addition, we perform a propensity weighting analysis to count for differences in the likelihood to be tested for COVID-19 for each of the evaluated uh, populations. Shown here are the high level results. Men on ADT who were tested for COVID-19 had an approximately 25% reduction in the risk of testing positive for COVID-19 compared to all tested veterans who are not on ADT. Men on ADT had approximately 14% reduction in the risk of testing positive compared to the subset of tested prostate cancer patients not on ADT. These findings suggest that there's a modest protective effect of ADT for testing positive for COVID-19. And this uh, modest effect is consistent with a similar incidence in COVID-19 in men and women. No study to date has adequately assessed the effects of ADT on COVID-19 related outcomes, COVID-19 severity. Given the more marked difference in COVID-19 outcomes in men versus women as compared to the differences in incidence, we hypothesize that men on ADT have improved outcomes compared to men not on ADT. <clears throat> the results are shown on this slide. <clears throat> Here, uh, summarize, we summarize uh, the differences in the outcomes of COVID-19 uh, positive veterans on ADT versus all COVID-19 positive veterans not on ADT. <clears throat> we use logistic regression analysis to account for differences in the population. And you can see that the odd ratios for each outcome is highlighted in yellow with the 95% confidence interval shown to the right of each odds ratio value. There was a clinically and statistically significant reduction in ICU admissions, need for ventilatory support, intubation, and death. Further analyses comparing ADT to prostate cancer patients only and to all cancer patients is ongoing. Two underlying hypotheses may account for the effects of ADT on COVID-19 outcomes. First, the activated angioreceptor induces expression of the two receptors, TEMPRS2 and ACE2, that are necessary for viral entry into pulmonary epithelium. Second, androgens create a state of relative immunosuppression, specifically as compared to females, males have reduced innate and adaptive immunity. There have been a number of efforts that have aimed to establish whether the AR is co-expressed with TEMPRS2 and ACE2 in human lung epithelium. Single cell results have suggested that these three proteins are indeed co-expressed in at least a subset of pulmonary epithelial cells. Preliminary work has been conducted by my colleagues at UCLA, and uh, we have found that the choice of the antibody to detect tempus is critical to the results. This slide shows that the uh, co-expression of the androceptor, tempus 2 and ACE2 in human bronchiolar epithelium. This slide shows co-expression of AR tempus 2 and ACE2 in the human male nasal sinus. And this is relevant because we are performing pharmacodynamic studies on nasal pharyngeal swabs as a component of the clinical trial, the HITCH study that I will be presenting to you shortly. And what you can see <clears throat> is that uh, on this slide is that <clears throat> castration uh, reduces the expression of tempus 2 in the murine uh, nasal sinus, and castration also reduces ACE2 expression in the murine nasal sinus. And um, similarly, uh, there's a reduction in AR expression response to castration also in the murine nasal sinus. This slide demonstrates that castration induces thymic uh, hypertrophy in male mice. You can see the uh, arrows pointing to the enlarged um, uh, uh, thymus gland uh, shown in white in uh, the castrated as compared to the intact male mice. And this is consistent with the suppressive effects of androgens on innate and adaptive immunity that's observed in humans. <clears throat> So given the information presented so far, we hypothesize that ADT will reduce the severity of COVID-19 illness amongst hospitalized veterans. This is being prospectively tested in our HITCH study. This is a multi-center VA phase two randomized placebo-controlled double-blind uh, study 
to compare best supportive care plus Degarelix, an LHRH antagonist, versus best supportive care plus placebo. And here's the uh, scientific rationale. <clears throat> What you can see is that androgens may exacerbate COVID-19 illness by either upregulating the expression of the viral co-receptors or inducing a relative state of immunosuppression. So why did we choose Degarelix? Well, Degarelix is an LHRH antagonist and it rapidly suppresses serum testosterone levels. 24 hours after Degarelix injection, serum testosterone is suppressed by 90% and by three days, virtually all patients have a cash rate level of serum testosterone. In contrast, LHRH agonists like, such as luprolide result in a transient increase in serum testosterone, which could in pr principle exacerbate COVID-19 illness. And they require about two to three weeks to achieve a cash rate serum testosterone level. Potent AR antagonists such as enzalutamide or apalutamide were not selected because they require about four weeks to achieve a steady state in humans, time period that is really not ideal for the acutely ill hospitalized COVID-19 patient. The objectives of the HITCH study are shown here. The primary objective is to determine if Degarelix improves the clinical outcomes of veterans hospitalized to an acute care ward due to COVID-19 as defined by reduction in mortality, ongoing need for hospitalization or requirement for ventilation. The secondary uh, objectives will determine if Degarelix reduces the time to clinical improvement, inpatient mortality, length of hospitalization, duration of intubation for mechanical <laughs> ventilation, and time to achieve uh, a normal temperature. The primary endpoint is a composite endpoint of in inpatient mortality at day 15, ongoing need for hospitalization at day 15, or a requirement for mechanical ventilation at a day 15. Multiple secondary endpoints are shown as well. Exploratory endpoints will identify germline genomic factors <clears throat> and baseline serum testosterone levels that may be predictive of clinical outcome. We'll also assess the pharmacodynamic effects of ADT on TEMPRAS-2 and ACE-2 in the human nasopharynx. We'll also assess the uh, ADT effects on immune <coughs> cell numbers and cytokine levels. Here <coughs> is the trial schema. Male veterans who test positive for SARS-CoV-2, <coughs> the virus that causes uh, COVID-19, by acute RT-PCR on nasal pharyngeal swab are admitted to an inpatient ward for COVID-19 related symptoms will be enrolled. Patients will randomize two to one to a single 240 milligram loading dose of Degarelix plus best supportive care versus placebo plus best supportive care. The primary and secondary endpoints have already been discussed and patients will be stratified <clears throat> according to age, presence or absence of hypertension and influenza severity scale. The main inclusion criteria are shown here. Participants will be male veterans, largely between the ages of 18 and 85, who are admitted for COVID-19. Patients will have an influenza severity score between three and five, which correlates to hospitalized patients. Patients with an influenza severity score of six, which indica indicates intubation, are excluded because the pathophysiology of the disease at this state is felt to be largely related to a hyperinflammatory state. In, <clears throat> and uh, we feel that um, uh, the, the disease is no longer dependent on the virus itself. Uh, influenza severity score of seven is the highest and that indicates a deceased patient. The main exclusion criteria are shown here and they're related to cardiac uh, related issues such as prolonged QT interval. In addition, patients on hormonally active agents are uh, also excluded, as well as uh, other exclusions shown here on this slide. Best supportive care um, uh, is not restricted. Uh, the patients can have uh, remdesivir, convalescent plasma on, uh, through the expanded access program, as well as dexamethasone or any other agents uh, that uh, patient may benefit from uh, in the context of uh, COVID. 
So <clears throat> here are the statistics. Based on the published phase three studies, we assume that approximately 60% of control patients will continue to be hospitalized, intubated, or deceased by day 15. Assuming an effect size of 42%, we'll need 186 patients, 124 in the Daguerrelix arm and 62 in the placebo arm. <clears throat> Assuming a 5% attrition rate, a total of 198 patients will be required. An interim analysis after half of the patients have reached the primary endpoint will exclude evidence of extreme futility or efficacy. When the study was originally conceived, the COVID-19 hotspots included Los Angeles, uh, Puget Sound, Seattle, and New York. However, the uh, geography of COVID-19 has uh, changed and multiple additional sites uh, have been added as shown here and other sites are being uh, in, um, uh, added to the study <coughs> as uh, of the date of this presentation. So I just want to uh, conclude by thanking all of the contributors uh, to this study, both from the VA, the Prostate Cancer Fa Foundation, as well as uh, our academic uh, colleagues at UCLA and the University of Washington. Uh, thank you for your time and attention.